Hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you what we can do with a vitrograph, how we can set one up with different kinds of kilns, and some of the really interesting things we can do with it. I'm going to show you how to make stringers, and how to make uh, rods, and murini, and bulbs, and then a bunch of different projects, the things that we can make from the glass streams that come out of this wonderful monstrosity here. It's just warming up, it's just about ready to go, so pretty soon we're going to start having fun pulling glass out. Running molten glass with a vitrograph is lots of fun, and even more can be educational. Yeah, it's fun playing with the streams of glass, creating different shapes from bulbs to stringers to swirls and twirls and all of the different shapes you can make. And the educational experience is how a vitrograph will give you a chance to see in live action how the glass behaves at different temperatures. You can see how the glass transitions from fully molten through the stages of full fuse, tack fuse, slump, and finally to fully firm. It pours out of the bottom of the pot glowing and fully molten. As the molten glass drops, it cools and hardens. Barely out of the pot, it's still at full fuse temperature, and, if twisted or twirled, it will melt into another stream of glass. An inch or so down, it's cooled to tack fuse temperature, still hot enough if it's twisted or twirled, will tack fuse to itself. Further down, it's cooled to slump temperature, now too cool to fuse, but still soft enough to be shaped. Finally, further down, it's cooled below slump temperature, and it's no longer soft enough to bend. Now, experimenting with different glass shows you how different colors of glass and different kinds of glass have different viscosity and how different viscosity will affect how fast the glass flows. I'll be demonstrating how that happens. I seriously believe if more glass artisans knew more about how to use vitrographs and what all vitrographs can do, a lot more would be using them.